In today's Deep Web Tips, we're going to install the Tor browser within our Ubuntu virtual machine that we created a, a few videos ago. Uh, the process is very similar to installing it on Windows 10, uh, but there's a few things that you'll notice a little bit different. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to use our, our uh, Firefox browser and we're going to uh, go ahead and Google Tor so that we can actually make sure we get to the correct project. Uh, so this, it's going to be this one here, the Tor browser, and the URL is torproject.org. Uh, because we're using something that's used for exploitation, uh, there's a lot of bad versions of the Tor browser out there. So make sure you get it from a reputable source or you go directly to the URL that you know is correct. So this process is going to be a little bit different from Windows. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click the download the Tor browser button and it's going to take us to the same page and we're going to go all the way over here to the right and we're going to go ahead and click on the 64-bit version under Linux. Now unlike Windows where there was an installer, there is no installer for uh, the Linux version. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and say open with the archive manager and then once we download it uh, it's going to go ahead and open the archive manager and then we can go ahead and store this on our hard drive all right so it's now completed and we have the archive manager up uh, we're going to go ahead and right click on the folder and we're going to say extract now i'm going to put this and you can put this anywhere you want but i'm actually just going to put it in my root directory so it's going to be just the default will uh, this is probably a good spot to store it then I'm going to go ahead and click Extract. Uh, this is only going to take a few seconds to go through and uncompress it. And what's going to happen, unlike with the Windows version where it installs it, uh, this is actually just going to put it on our hard drive and then we're going to run the program itself uh, when we're ready to launch the Tor browser. All right, now that it's done extracting the files, we can click Close. We can go ahead and close the Archive Manager. And we're done with Firefox, so we can close that as well. Now we're going to go ahead and open our files up and you'll see right here the Tor browser is showing as a folder. Uh, now in this folder you'll see there's a file or there's an icon that says Tor browser setup. So we're going to run that and we're going to run this one time and it's going to go ahead and do a quick setup. Now you'll see that just now set change this to Tor browser. Uh, so now this will be how we actually launch the Tor browser. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and click this icon over here on the left now that it finished running the setup, it went ahead and launched the Tor browser. Now just like with Windows, we have these two options. We can do a connect, uh, which is how we're going to actually do it because we're going to uh, set up the browser to go ahead and use the Tor network as a proxy. Now it's going to go ahead and establish a connection to the Tor network and it's going to register itself and it's going to figure out what the paths that it needs to take through the Tor network are. And then the browser is going to pop up. Now you'll notice this looks very similar to another browser uh, and that's because it's using the Mozilla engine, the same engine as Firefox. So a lot of the look and the feel are going to be identical as the Firefox. But this is its own instance and there are some safeguards that it's put in place uh, as part of that anonymity. So now that we have the Tor browser up, let's go ahead and go to a regular Surface website. Uh, we're just going to go to the brightplanet.com website. One thing you may notice is, is that the Tor browser is a lot slower than if you were just to go to brightplanet.com directly within Firefox. And the reason is, is because it's making these external paths through different countries before it actually goes out to the public web. You know, it leaves the Tor network and then connects to the Bright Planet website. You'll also notice you'll get a lot of errors like this or warnings that pop up, uh, just indicating poten pot potential issues with websites that may be tracking your identity. Uh, in this case, it's talking about an HTML5 canvas image, uh, but because this is a Surface website um, and for what we're doing, we don't care, so we're just going to go ahead and close this message. So just like within our Windows Tor browser, uh, this is identical to the web page that you would get if you were just to go straight to brightplanet.com uh, from your regular Firefox. But we actually took a unique path here. So if we click the little onion icon, You'll see it actually went from this browser, from this virtual machine, to a server in France, to another one in Germany, and then another one in Germany uh, before it actually went to the internet and got to brightplanet.com. So brightplanet, if you were to look at our server's log, it would indicate that we're coming from Germany right now uh, with this IP address, this 31 dot IP address. Now if we want to change our route, our connection through the Tor network, we can use this option right here to create a new circuit. And what that'll do is it'll essentially tell the Tor network uh, they do, that we don't want to use that path anymore and we want a different path to the brightplanet.com website. 
uh, and it'll do that instantly and then it'll reload the web page. Now it does maintain some of the cookie information when you create a new circuit, uh, but as you'll see the change, the path actually was a different path. So before it was France, Germany, Germany, now it's France, Germany, Netherlands, and now the brightplanet.com server thinks we're coming from this 51.ip address. So just like the Windows version of Tor, uh, the default web browser is DuckDuckGo. So if we come in and we say, what's my IP, and we do it as a search, it's going to ser search through the DuckDuckGo search engine and come back. Uh, now this will also create a different identity, so we can go ahead and see where we're coming from. So France, France, Netherlands, and that IP address is um, 109, uh, which matches up here as well. So one more thing before we wrap this video up. If you remember, we were in the Tor directory within our home directory in order to launch Tor, uh, the Tor browser. Now you can always do that and just come in and go to that directory and launch it. Uh, but if you want, you can also just hold down the control key and drag that over to the bar here on the left and pin it just like you can within Windows. So now we have the Tor browser uh, right here within our panel on the left. So anytime we want to launch it, we can just go ahead and click it. So that concludes our video for today. Uh, the next video we're going to show you how to use the Tor browser to access the .onion sites, uh, which is the real true dark web content. If you like this video, be sure to head over to our Deep Web University, where you'll find more videos, white papers, and articles about open source web harvesting for your business. I would also invite you to join our monthly newsletter, where we send out exclusive insights and partner updates. If you're ready to continue learning, I've got a couple videos already queued up for you. 